Hello, my name is Stephen Absey, and today I'd like to talk to you about Cam Studio 2.0. Uh, today I'd like to discuss how you can use the program how, and install in it, and what useful functions you'll have. This is a good program to have if you want to do any type of instructional video on your computer or laptop for school, or maybe even gaming to add to YouTube. So to begin with, let's start with the actual uh, installation of the program. To begin with, the first stages of downloading uh, Cam Studio. Uh, I'm going to only demonstrate how you can download the Cam Studio, the previous and uh, outdated model, because it's the easier one to use. Uh, there is a newer model to use, but there's a lot more steps in downloading it. And uh, unless you know what you're doing, you could actually mess up your computer, which I don't want to cause anybody to do that. So the first stage is what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to Google. And I've already got mine pulled up right here. And not just type in Cam Studio. And what that's going to bring up is you're going to want to bring up the first option that you have, which is Cam Studio free screen recording software, as you can see right here. You're going to click onto that, and it's going to bring up this page. Now, when you first come up to this page, you're going to actually see the newer model that's out there. But again, to actually download this model, you're going to actually have to do some programming on your side. So I'm just going to demonstrate the actual older model, which is a lot easier to use and easier to install. You're going to scroll all the way down, and what you're looking for at first is Cam Studio. It's going to be Cam Studio 20.exe, and all you're going to do is you're going to click on it, and it should start up a choice to actually download the file or save the file. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the file, and that's going to download for me. Now, it's going to download the file that you've already specified in your web browser, uh, but for me, I'm just going to go to my tools, my download, and then I'm just going to start the program from right here. It's a lot easier and faster. So once I got that, I'm going to minimize all these windows. And I'm going to say yes. And that's going to bring you to the actual installation screen. So right here, you're going to have to read through all these terms and agreements. Honest truth be told, it just means no disclaimer forms pretty much. So I'm going to agree to it. Next. And at this stage, you can actually just set up the actual uh, directory folder for where this is going to be saved. Now I've already got the advanced version of this so I'm going to actually put an A at the end of this but for this installation you shouldn't have to worry about making any changes in this folder unless you want to save this to another directory. I'm going to start and it's going to download. It's not going to take Now a this didn't work because I actually had really Cam Studio advanced, run it. Advanced program. It's also not that big either. So once it hits 100% you're going to click OK and then it's just going to let you know that your installation has finished successfully. You can go ahead and click OK at this point. So the first stage is you're going to double click onto it. And what that's going to do is that's going to actually bring up this box right here. Now with, the, now with this Cam Studio option, uh, you're only going to get a few options. Uh, you're going to get File, Region, Options, Tools, View, and Help. And then down here for Display, it's just going to be like a camcorder almost. You've got Record, Pause, Stop. This button right here is going to let you toggle the actual view of this. So that way you can minimize it or you can just kind of squeeze it up to so that way when you're doing your recording projects, it's not going to get in the way. Then you also have the option of having screen... Uh, notations and unless you really want to mess around with this feature I probably would stay away from it because what it's going to do is it's going to put a lot of boxes on your screen whenever you start the program then you also have the option of to record in flash or AVI I recommend just staying with the standard which is SWF set to record in AVI now let's start off with a file with the file Again, just like any recorder, it's just going to be record, stop, pause, but you're going to also have exit here. Unless you're, uh, unless you're going to be doing anything uh, unusual, you're probably just not going to even need to use file ever, except just closing out the, the actual X button. For the region, this is where you can actually set it up to be unique, where a region you can actually set uh, on your screen, and then you can move it around as you're going throughout the actual recording. Fixed region, that means I can actually set up a box on the screen, and wherever that box is set, that's going to only record that section of it. And then 
most people, it's probably easier to just use the full screen. That way you can actually capture the actual entire presentation of what you're doing. For the options, you're going to have video options, cursor options, audio recording, record for microphone or speakers, audio options for the microphone, speakers, and video synchronization, auto pan, which means... As you can see my mouse, if I move it to anywhere on the screen, it's going to auto pan to where my mouse is. The honest truth be told, that feature, it can make people sick because if you move your mouse around quite a bit, it's going to get a little confusing and it's not a good feature. So I would not actually use that. Then you got program options where you can actually have the program minimized at the start of recording. Use a flashing uh, rectangle during recording. And then you can just set other options like saving settings on the exit, capturing uh, layered windows, and then playing your actual video. I recommend just using the standard Cam Studio Player 2.0. There's not a whole lot of options I would actually recommend for the beginning user to actually make a changes to, except within the video options here. Uh, some systems, and I've been seeing this on the Windows uh, 7 version of the operating system, it's probably best recommended to go with the Microsoft Video 1 because if you go to any other version, there's a possibility that the actual video will flicker. For the quality, about uh, 70 is alright. I would probably recommend going up to about 85, maybe 90. You don't want to go to 100, otherwise you're going to be recording an extreme amount of uh, high quality, which is going to take up a lot of space on your hard drive. And unless uh, you want to worry about all that recording, I just kind of stay away from this feature. Now, for the next one, uh, you have the auto adjust feature, which is going to control the set key frames, the capture frames, and the playback rate. I recommend probably messing around with this a little bit. And one of the key features I would recommend is maybe setting it to 33. 30 and 33. It seems to be a safe setting for during your recording so that way you're not going to over extreme your hard drive with uh, recording but at the same time you're not going to get bad quality either. Okay. Another option to look at is the cursor options and you have the ability to okay well I want to hide my cursor so that way wherever I'm clicking uh, the program is going to just automatically work and you're just going to kind of recognize that there's nothing there. It's good for presentations, especially if you're doing like a PowerPoint or you're doing some type of a visual presentation. But for uh, this main installation, it's best to have an actual pointer so that way people can follow along with what you're doing, what you're clicking on, and how you're clicking. You also have the ability to make changes to your uh, cursor, which means I can check any one of these and this will actually become my new cursor. It's probably just easier to stick around with the average cursor though. Then last but not least, for the cursor highlight, you can actually select this, move a circle, and what this is going to do is, as you can see with my mouse, there's an actual circle of color around, which means it's a lot easier to follow with the mouse instead of a smaller mouse. And then uh, with the more advanced version, you actually have the ability to, okay, well, if I click one way or click the other way, it's going to change colors and that's used to kind of help people to figure out what type of uh, function you're doing with your mouse. For the newer version, you're only going to get one, but it's it's still a good version to have because uh, you can still follow around with the mouse. And you can actually change up the actual types of uh, display functions you have for the mouse, whether you want square, rectangle, or eclipse. And then you can just change a color if you'd like to. For the audio function, I always just recommend probably recording from your actual microphone. Uh, for me right now, I'm actually recording from my Bluetooth headset, which I have connected up to my computer. Then uh, the last function I like to show you on this is the option to have recording uh, keystrokes, uh, kind of like shortcut keys. And uh, you can do this by just setting up certain keys so that way... Uh, you can actually automatically record, pause, stop a key, stop recording key without having to bring back up the application and actually doing all those functions. It kind of helps out. If you're just getting started with the program, it's probably just best re 
recommended to leave the program up there for a little bit until you get used to it. And then afterwards, you can start using the shortcut keys. It'll be a lot easier to understand and a lot easier to use. Last but not least, I like to go into the screen of notations and video notations. And again, what this is going to do is when you start your play playback, you're going to get like a flat text on the screen or you're going to get these bubbles. Unless you know what you're doing with these, it's a lot harder to use these. So again, I recommend probably just not using these. Then uh, another function I like to show you is a video a notation. Now what this is going to do is, uh, let's just say on your computer you have a webcam. Well, this is going to actually bring up a screen to uh, display who's talking. This is great for presentation if, uh, let's say, just over here, you wanted to actually have your face right here as you're explaining your presentation, and then over here, have your, all your presentation going on at the same time. It's a great way to actually present something. If, let's say, you're trying to present something over the internet to multiple individuals. It's something to definitely play around with. But, um... That's pretty much what the whole program is, Cam Studio. It's a great program to use for uh, any of your presentations for school, any of your actual maybe gaming that you want to put on YouTube. Um, it's just a really good program, and I recommend uh, getting it. It's a completely free. Uh, there's no actual cost put down inside of it, and there's no viruses on this website that I've found so far, and I've always been doing scans on it. And... Uh, it's just an overall good program. I hope this terminal has helped you out a little bit. Uh, again, there's a much more advanced version out there. And uh, if you're wanting to try to get that more advanced version, just uh, send me an email and I can definitely help you out with that. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you enjoy Cam Studio. Bye.